Do you paint landscapes, florals, botanicals? Want more lively and interesting greens? Why do I sound like an infomercial? I have no idea. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Glad you could join me today. You know, today we're going to talk about the color green. If you paint landscapes or botanicals or florals, chances are you probably use a lot of it. And I want to show you a way, I want to challenge you with a way to make those greens more interesting and lively. Everybody give it up for my studio partner, Reese. Dude, you got a little bit of green on your cheek. Okay, well here's the thing. When you need a lot of green, you typically will reach for a tube green. Sap green, hooker's green, those two mainly. They're very natural looking. They're not overly vibrant. What I want to propose to you today is don't touch them. Don't use them at all. And here's why. The vast majority of paintings where that is your go-to green will look very monochromatic, at least in the green areas, and a little bit dead. You can get far more interesting greens if you mix them. And I'm going to show you a way to do that. Alright, painted here you can see a little bit of sap green. Oftentimes, when an artist needs a lot of green, they go to a tube green, like sap green or hooker's green. And they put a lot of it out on their palette and that's what they use. Now the danger in doing this is overuse of the green and sort of a monochromatic effect. I want to show you what my green palette is. This is Azo Yellow. Real nice bright kind of lemony yellow. Very transparent. This is Indian Yellow. It's kind of an orange not quite a pumpkin, but like a squash, between a squash or a pumpkin color. This is Prussian blue. It's sort of an aqua blue. Last but not least, are the well-known ultramarine blue. That's on just about everybody's palette, I think. Now typically when I paint greens in foliage, tree lines, trees, whatever, I will use a palette similar to this. It can vary. I'll vary the, the blues. Sometimes I'll vary the yellows. But usually I'll have a couple of yellows and a couple of blues. Sometimes I will have red on the palette. This allows me to gray out the greens at times. I also like to have some Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a really nice bluish gray. This allows me to deepen and neutralize greens in places as well. There's nothing wrong with painting this and a lot of really great artists do. But I'll also say it takes a really good artist to use that and not let not have your greens turn out dead and kind of monochromatic. If you're going for that that's fine but you can just about spot a painting a mile away that's overused one color green. So I want to challenge you to add some more life in your color by doing this and put just put the hooker's green and the sap green away. I've gotten so much more success out of painting greens this way that I've just stuck with it and I've really enjoyed doing that. All right, let me paint you a little kind of a tree line here. It's just a little sample doodle, basically. It's pretty typical of what you will see a lot of painters do. I see a lot of green, so I'm going to paint a lot of green. What I'll typically try to do instead is start mixing green. So I'm going to bring in this ultramarine blue. Come over here to the Azo Yellow. What I get is this spectrum all the way across between the two colors of greens I can draw from. In practicality, it might you might it might look like this. I'm just alternately going back and dipping my brush back and forth between the blue and the yellow or picking up color anywhere along the spectrum. I'm going to go over here and grab a little bit of Indian yellow. You can even dab in a little red and where the red starts bleeding into the green it'll kind of gray out maybe brown a little bit add some interest that way. And I did this without any greens on my palette. 
just just to show you how easy it is to vary the greens I'm just gonna paint a tree and maybe this is a an evergreen again I'm just doodling this in but this is Prussian blue which has a nice aqua feel to it bring in some ultramarine shadows If you want, you can go back and blend. Just look at the life that that approach adds to your greens. I'll just show you a different approach. A lot of heavy lemon yellow. Maybe this is a diff distant hedge row or tree line. That's real easy. I mean. Uh, it, it's as though I've got like 10 different greens on my palette. And after it's dry, you know, you can go back with that same palette, kind of in a mosaic fashion, you know, bring in some dry washes. Here I'm bringing in some dry washes of blue over the shadows, of ultramarine blue. Maybe a little bit of Prussian blue. It's possible to do the same thing with hooker's green or sap green base. But overall, it just ends up looking a lot flatter and deader, I think. Um, and, you know, it's all preference. So you have to get this and try it and see if that's going to be your thing. I feel like I've got so much option here as opposed to just squirting out some green on, over to the side and pulling green out of my palette. Here I'm going to lay down some Payne's Gray and it's going to be very, kind of a very dark tree line. So let's say I want to go with a more neutral line of trees. I can lay that in. Add in some blue shadows. Maybe this is more of a wintry day with just a few Maybe there's just a few evergreens mixed into the background. If I use the Indian yellow, which is more orange, orange neutralizes blue, so it's going to be a little more neutral. What I've ended up here with here is more gray tones, but they're lively gray tones. They're not like dead, flat kind of gray tones. Uh, they got some interesting colors and hues going on in there. I can even go back here if I wanted to add a more distant bluer level. And I'm doing this all with blues and yellows and grays. And a little bit of red. Palettes like this, with this kind of a selection of color, can really give you a lot of options when you're painting green trees or foliage. So give that a try and see what you can do with it. Set up a palette similar to that. You don't have to use those exact same colors. Um, vary the blues, vary the yellows, and experiment, experiment, experiment. But I guarantee you, you'll probably get more interesting and more lively greens. Thanks guys, I hope this was a help to you. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And we will see you next time.